All right, another really interesting development in the NFT space. This one really stands out. So, you know, OpenSea is to NFTs as Coinbase is to crypto trading. And all of a sudden, we may have a contender for the Uniswap of NFTs. And it is launched by uh, Andre Cronier from Yearn, who just launched this thing called Arteon on the Phantom blockchain that may be, may be, you know, it's still early days, may be an open source competitor to the OpenSea NFT marketplace. And that's why this is really interesting to me. Um, I'm going to throw this straight to, who am I going to throw this to? I'm going to throw this to Naomi. Naomi, I think this represents potentially a really interesting move to decentralize the NFT uh, marketplace space. And I'm curious what your initial thoughts are on this launch. Well, I mean, in the article, they talk about SushiSwap versus Uniswap, right, as kind of the example of this vampire mining, the idea that what a company kind of does is a new company comes up, they basically copy the code of an existing platform, uh, and then they offer better, better incentives for that same product to try to bring over all of the liquidity pool onto their platform. And that's what SushiSwap did for Uniswap very briefly. I think their um, total value locked, like flipped, but then went back. And it's interesting the way that people think of that. Like people think of SushiSwap as coming around and being more fair because the initial distribution of capital for Uniswap, it, too much of it went into the hands of VCs. And um, um, I, I push back against that idea a lot. You know, the people who fund the platform, who take the risk on this, who hire all the developers, you know, who allow this thing to, to flourish, they absolutely deserve to take a cut of that. Um, so it, it bothers me when people, you know, push back against that as if that's a really unfair situation, because it's not. It seems like a, a very fair response to people allocating their capital and taking a huge risk with that allocation. Um, but what is interesting in this situation is, like, first of all, we're going into the, the NFT space, which is kind of new and this idea that we could have an open source version of this. I mean, I think there does seem to be more fairness involved with this just because of what we spoke about on a previous show where you had some dodgy things happening behind the scenes uh, on OpenSea. You had you know, employees who were kind of doing things that were against company policy and it took someone like outside of the company to actually call them on this and say, hey, did you know what's going on here? I'm whistleblowing on your company. Um, now, this would be a lot easier if all of this were, were open and this is kind of what uh, Andre Kranz is trying to do here is create a system where it is kind of auditable, which is kind of interesting. You know, it's interesting to live in a world where that is the primary focus of, of people's minds right now. We want things that are open, transparent, auditable by the masses. It's so, it's such an antithesis to existing systems where we had, where we had these closed, opaque companies, closed, opaque governments, the Fed that's never had an audit. You know, it's, it's a very refreshing to see this movement. But I, was it George, did I see your hand go up? Or was it Jen? I think both. We tied can... each other, but George, you go first. Okay. Uh, I want to latch on the, the point you talked about there, Naomi, about the copy and paste idea where how many times are we going to rotate onto different smart contract blockchains, right? This is phantom now. This is something we haven't talked about yet, but we saw this happen with Binance Smart Chain. When Binance Smart Chain came on and everything was super cheap until it wasn't, right? And then people just rotated into the next smart contract uh, platform. Are we just going to have, you know, cool new NFT platforms pop up on Phantom? And then after that, once it gets expensive again, is someone going to copy and paste and put it on some new? Probably. Uh, yeah. Is that just going to keep that? Is there an end of the road or are we just going to keep going? Are we going to keep going? It's more of a, like, does this end? Is this an open Ponzi? Are we just going to keep just rotating things into other things and everyone's keep making money or, or no? But uh, sorry, Jen, to sidetrack that. No, that's okay. That was like, a, I was kind of thinking around the, the same question that you're asking there. But Zach, I had a question for you. Just help me wrap my head around this. <laughs> um, OpenSea really has built a brand for themselves. They, they have amassed they have amassed the most customers in, in this space that we've seen. And so with a platform like this, like how do you get customers there? There's like a lot more to this than, than just the platform. Well, I mean, this is like when the first decentralized exchanges were launched and everyone was like, why would I use a decentralized exchange when I can just go to Coinbase? And so what this represents to me is the first real decentralized exchange in the NFT space from someone who is a very prominent DeFi builder. And that's why this stands out. And I think people will decide on their own. They'll say, okay, hey, I like the convenience of OpenSea. I like that there is some central inter intermediary that works for me. It's where the party is. I think there are other people who are gonna say, hey, you know what? 
I would prefer this to be on a blockchain that's cheaper to, uh, that that offers cheaper fees and um, is open source and can be copy pasted against all uh, onto all these other networks down the line. And that's why this is actually quite interesting. It's sort of designed to be copy copy and pasted. Um, and you know, he's trying to he's sort of thinking about ways to get this on as many of these uh, other networks as possible. So. Um, if this becomes the Uniswap of NFTs, that will be really interesting for the NFT market because as we've seen over the last six months, NFTs aren't going anywhere, it seems. So that's that's sort of my response to that question, but I'm happy to take a follow-up. That's a great it. response.